Thank you all for joining us today. I am Dr. Marty Eccles, the Dean of the College of Biomedical Science at Larkin University. And I am, we are going to discuss sexuality in the geriatric population or sexuality as you age. Thank you so much to NSU Florida and the Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program who has received a grant from HRSA who has provided the funding for the development of these modules. I have no conflicts of interest to report. Our objectives for the day are understanding and beginning to broaden our definition of sexual behavior and becoming aware of the changing role of sexuality as we are aging. Understanding the essential considerations for healthcare providers in the role of the sexual health of your elderly patients. Taking a brief look at some uh, models for taking a sexual history within the clinical context. And finally, providing a framework for the identification and treatment of sexual concerns. Let's begin with the definitions and thinking in terms of broad conceptualizations of these definitions. Sex was or is a mutual voluntary activity with another person. It usually involves sexual contacts, whether or not it involves sexual or orgasm and whether those occur. Sexuality, on the other hand, is really a lifeline, uh, lifelong aspect of just being human. It's really not limited by age, by physical appearance, by health or function, um, in, which includes the capacity to link emotional and needs with physical uh, intimacy and uh, within the constraints of your ability. Physical intimacy is the sexual proximity of people, okay, and this could be an expression of feelings such as hugging, hand holding, kissing, caressing, and sexual activity. Emotional intimacy is a dimension of interpersonal intimacy that varies really in both degree and length. It allows for the ability for you to feel an emotion and express that emotion both verbally and non-verbally. As we look at the elderly populations, we need to take a broader look at the concept of sexuality rather than only the act of sex. So sexuality in the elderly population is a lifelong phenomenon. As a matter of fact, it is a human right to be able to express that emotion, that feeling. It, there is a need for everybody, for comfort, for love, for stability, especially as you age. Many adults do continue to be sexually active and they exhibit good health uh, as they age. But also when you're dealing with the elderly population, understand that it becomes primary to them in many cases to have happy, healthy relationships as they age. From the healthcare provider's perspective, we need to think about the fact that we were trained in very narrow definitions of what sex is and really for many, many years it was not really something people spoke of. So as a result, healthcare providers have really kind of limited training and understanding of the concept of sexuality, especially when it's time to discuss it with your elderly patients. So we know that there is an increased need for both training and research on geriatric sexual behavior. What is important for the healthcare provider to know before even engaging in conversations about sexuality with their geriatric patients? If you are blessed to have known this patient over a continuum of time, you have the advantage of perhaps knowing their past knowledge about their behavior sexually. What are their sexual attitudes? Who are their partners? Do they have alternative sexual performance uh, patterns? Do they have performance anxiety? Have they experienced physical changes? 
if they have not been a patient of yours for a long enough period of time for you to know that, you do need to inquire and make sure that you have an understanding of where they're coming from. What is their past experience? The role of communication on this topic as with the healthcare provider, the role of communication becomes very essential. You have to have an atmosphere of trust in order to have this conversation. And conversations about sexuality are not only about the provider's words, but also the body language and the tone that you exhibit when you're having this conversation with your patient. Last thing that you need to refresh is what medications are, is your patient on? Are there patients, medications, that exhibit to maybe influencing their sexual behavior, perhaps in lack of performance, perhaps in low libido. Um, these are things that as the healthcare provider, you need to know. I've included in today's presentation a very brief reference table of the major drugs that elderly patients may be on and I included the sexual side effect for you to review so that you can quickly determine if any of these medications might be having an influence in their sexual behavior. Once we have a, a grasp of the concept of sex and what you as the provider and the patient are talking about when you say sex or sexuality, then the next step is taking a sexual history. In the surveys that we looked at with Boston University, it was quite interesting to find that most patients want to talk about sexuality with their healthcare provider. They are kind of embarrassed to bring some of these topics up. They're afraid of a healthcare provider thinking that they're a sex maniac or just the opposite, that talking about sex would be wasting your time. 75% of the elderly population think that sexual dysfunction is a normal part of aging. Be sure that you and your patient both know and understand the definition when you ask about sex or you ask about sexuality so that you're both talking on the same level. We of course recommend that you discuss sexual history in the later parts of the patient interview after you have established a rapport with that patient. There are a couple of different strategies that have been used some providers actually have flyers, brochures, or surveys in their waiting rooms for patients to complete. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get your sexual history, and there are several different models that people use. I'm gonna share two or three as part of today's presentation, just as a review. The Plicit model, um, a little bit um, more modern, we're asking permission. I think uh, probably the lead question that you might be able to ask here is sex and intimacy can be a very sensitive topic, but it is an important part of your health and well being. Can I ask you more questions about your sexual health? So the provider begins by asking permission of the patient to broach this topic. You normalize the discussion if they bring up anything that is a misconception or a myth, you take that opportunity to um, explain it. You know, um, you might want to bring up issues with medications that they are on and let them know that sometimes symptoms occur like erectile dysfunction or vaginal dryness that are part of the medications they're taking. If you do have a specific concern that's raised either in your review or by patients, okay, ask, you know, have your sexual relationships or has your intimacy level changed? Are there specific symptoms that you are worrying about? Ask the question so that 
it encourages the open-ended response. If you do identify something, use your standard protocol, behavioral or marriage counseling, medications, etc., just as you would any other. Another model, I think this model is very, very popular. It's been around for, again, a little while, the, the four Ps, partners, practices, protection from STIs, and previous STIs. So with partners, this is your lead question. When you have sex, is it with men, women, or both? How many partners have you had, et cetera? Do you have any new partners? Practices, what type of uh, sex do you have? Uh, is it, uh, you know, anal, oral, penis? You know, what, are, what exactly are you doing? If you're having sex, are you protecting yourself from potential STIs? Have you had STIs in the past? Have your partners had STIs in the past? In particular, if you're discussing this issue with a patient who is higher at risk, perhaps with HIV or hepatitis, you may want to probe closer about the STIs and previous ones that have been unveiled. The last one I want to show you is no fancy name for a model. There's, there's nothing elaborate about this. They're just great. Uh, conversation starters. Remember, your patients would like to talk about sex, but they're embarrassed and they don't want you to, you know, think something about them. So we need to find a way to discuss it. And I think here are some great questions where you can put these in uh, to your patient interview. Um, here are some examples. You know, some people on these medications notice sexual problems. Is that something that has affected you at all? Sometimes when people feel low or depressed, they lose interest in sex. Has that been an issue for you? Are you experiencing any problems in your sexual life? A broader question. I like this one in particular. As your clinician, I'm here to provide you guidance prevention and treatment regarding your sexual habits or preferences. Are there topics that you would like to discuss with me? So the idea is selecting an approach, integrating, a, taking the sexual history becomes important. Select an approach that you are comfortable with and stay with it. Be sure when you're asking about sexual questions that you do it in a fairly private environment and that you allow the patient time to respond. You may end up being one of the first providers that have ever asked them about their sexual behaviors. So they might be a little you know, stunned when you first ask them. Be sure to give them enough time to answer. If you notice anything about myths that they're projecting, be sure to make sure that you clarify that for them. Um, educate your patients about lifestyle choices if you've seen that change over time. As a provider yourself, be aware of your own prejudices and your subconscious feelings about having conversations with elderly patients about sex. And be aware that many physicians, they not only are concerned about understanding the stereotyping of sexuality in the elderly, but you also have to balance your feelings about the heavy influence that drug companies have had on the sexuality of the elderly. That with the Viagra has come a whole influence that providers are feeling a little overwhelmed with. How would you manage a patient with sexual dysfunction? Use the same protocol method that you have used throughout your career. First and foremost, obtain your detailed medical, social history, sexual history, perform uh, a general and a system examination. If you have obtained relevant information, you know, get to the etiology of the cause. If you find an organic cause, your treatment might be Viagra, Cialis, etc. 
If it's a psychosocial cause, it might be referral for therapy. Treat what you find in your, in your um, review of the patient. And then if you do identify something and you take an action, be sure on their next visit that you follow up with them. Have things improved? You know, are things getting better for you? So once you open the discussion and you have identified something that they want to talk about, please make a note in the charts on the EHR or whatever you're doing so that the next time they come in, you bring the topic up again so that you have some closure and it becomes an ongoing part of their visit with you. So what did we cover today? We understood now that the definition of sex is much more broader than it has been in our initial training. That sexuality is something that the older people sometimes enjoy, but they definitely want to be able to discuss with their healthcare professionals, even though it's embarrassing. So they're hoping that you bring it up. There are many options for you to take a sexual history. It's essential for you as the provider to integrate a sexual history into your patient interview, even though perhaps initially you're uncomfortable doing it or you don't feel that you are as well trained as you should have been. And of course, if an issue is in fact identified, you wanna follow your traditional protocol like you would for anything else, making appropriate referrals, whether they're organic or psychosocial. There are some reference materials that I used in today's presentation for you to refer to. And I just wanna say thank you so much for sharing and learning together today. It's been wonderful to have you as an audience. Thank you so much.